Hello, beloved. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a quarrelsome wife are alike. Don't tell my wife I said that. But we'll hear it today in our reading from the book of Proverbs. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Thursday of the second week after Pentecost, June 23rd, 2022. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, There is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing be on your people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 825 from Lutheran Service Book, Rise, shine, you people. Rise, shine, you people, Christ the Lord has entered. Our human story, God in him is centered. He comes to us by death and sin surrounded with grace unbounded. See how he sends the powers of evil reeling. He brings us freedom, light and life and healing. All men and women who by guilt are driven now are forgiven. Come celebrate your banners high unfurling, your songs and prayers against the darkness hurling. To all the world go out and tell the story, of Jesus' glory. Tell how the Father sent his Son to save us. Tell of the Son who life and freedom gave us. Tell how the Spirit calls from every nation his new creation. Today's reading is from the book of Proverbs, the 27th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. A stone is heavy, and sand is weighty, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Better is open rebuke than hidden love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. One who is full loathes honey, 
but to one who is hungry everything bitter is sweet. Like a bird that strays from its nest is a man who strays from his home. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. Do not forsake your friend and your father's friend, and do not go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor who is near than a brother who is far away. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad, that I may answer him who reproaches me. The prudent sees danger and hides himself, but the simple go on and suffer for it. Take a man's garment when he has put up security for a stranger, and hold it in pledge when he puts up security for an adulteress. Whoever blesses his neighbor with a loud voice, rising early in the morning, will be counted as cursing. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a quarrelsome wife are alike. To restrain her is to restrain the wind or to grasp oil in one's right hand. Iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Whoever tends a fig tree will eat its fruit, and he who guards his master will be honored. As in water face reflects face, so the heart of man reflects the man. Sheol and Abaddon are never satisfied, and never satisfied are the eyes of man. The crucible is for silver, and the furnace is for gold, and a man is tested by his praise. Crush a fool in a mortar with a pestle, along with crushed grain, yet his folly will not depart from him. Know well the condition of your flocks, and give attention to your herds, for riches do not last forever, and does a crown endure to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, 
You have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Cast out all sins and evil desires from us, and pour into our hearts your Holy Spirit to guide us into all blessedness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we return to Meditations on Divine Mercy by Johann Gerhard, translated by Matthew Harrison. Let us pray. O omnipotent, eternal, and merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant me the grace of the Holy Spirit so I may obtain the victory over all the world's temptations. The world assaults me with hatred, enticements, and perverted examples. Teach me to regard the hatred shown to me by the world as insignificant, to avoid the world's charms, and to avoid imitating the world's depravities. What can the world's hatred possibly do to me if your grace protects me like a shield? If you, my God, embrace me with love, what harm can befall me? even if everyone attacks me with hatred. On the other hand, if you pursue me with the anger of your wrath, what will it benefit me if everyone loves me? The world is passing away, and the world's hatred is passing away. Only the grace of God does not change. Remove confused fear from my heart, O God, so I do not dread the world's hatred and persecutions. Plant in me a fully confident soul and vigorous spirit, so I learn to think no more of earthly hatred than if it were a fleeting cloud. Why should I fear those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul? Instead, I will respect and fear him who is able not only to destroy the body, but also the soul in the eternal fire of hell. Our faith is is the victory that overcomes the world. By faith, we look forward to future joy so we can endure the adversities of the present age. By faith, we rest in divine goodness so we can bear the hatred of others. The world not only assaults me with its hatred, it also tries to lure me with its enticements. It has a stinging tail, but it also has a charming face. O Christ, give me the taste of sweet heavenly joy, so all love of the world dies within me. My soul has a taste for things corrupt. It grasps for earthly things. Contempt for worldly enticements seems bitter to my soul. But you who place the proper value on all things have taught me to reject the world's charms. You have determined to lift my soul toward heavenly matters. Turn my heart away from the enticements of the world. Thus, when I am turned to you, I might enjoy true spiritual delights. Of what benefit is the empty glory, the short-lived joy, the trivial power to people who love the world but are now dead? Of what benefit are the momentary pleasures of the flesh and the abundance of false wealth. Where are those who were with us a few days ago? Nothing remains of them but ashes and worms. They ate and drank without care. They finished their lives drunk with carnal joy. Now their flesh is fodder for worms, but their souls are tormented by eternal flames. All their glory has withered and dried up like the grass of the field. Prevent me, O Lord, from entering their paths. I do not want to come to the same miserable end. Lead me to victory over the world and to the crown of heavenly glory. Amen. We conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. 
And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.